What's going on guys? Back with another video. This one's gonna be pretty interesting. We have some wild stuff back here. Uh, all of it was free. Now, this isn't a deal that I got. I actually had a random person that I've communicated in the past reach out. Um, he had, in the past, asked me a bunch of computer questions and stuff like that, and I was helping him, and he hit me up, actually remembering that I helped him, and asked me if I could throw together this whole setup. Now, there's a little bit of a caveat. I don't know what here works, nor does he. Um, the guy who gave it to him for free claims he thinks all of it does work, but we're going to go through all of that in this video, and uh, yeah. So I put all the items that he got for free on this little table here, just so you don't confuse the other things in the background. Um, but yeah, let's go through what we got. So first off, starting with the GPU, we got a RTX 2080. Now this is a little bit older, of course, but it is a pretty nice model, and it did come with this little EVGA wraparound power connector thing, which is pretty cool. I'll see if he still wants that. That's actually a real nice little uh, piece there. It is an AIO unit, which some people hate, some people like, but either way, it's still a 2080. As for the board, we have the X570 Aorus Master, which is actually in here. Um, I was looking at this. It was supposed to be 64 gigs of RAM, according to that guy's listing or post. But as you can see, Z87 is DDR3, not DDR4. So this is 16 gigs of DDR3. And then we have another 32 gigs of Trident Z. This is the Neo. And these are actually really nice sticks. And then of course we have the motherboard combo. So the little ad thing that he sent me did claim to have a 3900X. Let's see what we got here. That is a Ryzen 9 3900X. Just so you guys can see it a little bit better. There you go. And the back pins look to be excellent. This is nice too. Whoever had this board kind of took care of it and they left all these peels on. So we're gonna have a, like, a really brand new looking board. Prepare yourself for this comment to be ironic in a couple of minutes. Now let's crack open this case. Apparently there's a Swift Tech liquid cooler in there, um, which looks to be in pretty terrible shape. I actually already ordered this guy a new CPU cooler because we're gonna take that out. I don't really trust it at this point. I'm actually gonna be giving this to my cat. I'll tell you guys in a minute why. We're gonna be putting a brand new Lexar one terabyte in there and also this 1000G. So he's gonna be spending about $160 total to get this entire machine up and running. Now let's crack open this case. I gotta be honest with my viewers. I sat here trying to get this side panel off for quite a bit of time. There's a button right here. Push it in, comes right off. Yeah, the Swift Tech cooler looks pretty gnarly. As you can see, the color has all fallen out. Usually these actually have some sort of color. This looks like maybe it was bluish. Um, I had a green one back in the day. And then if you look at all the tubing, you can see how bad the uh, plasticides have come off in the inside of the tube. Now there's new tubes that are, you know, better. And there is actually still liquid in here. You can kind of see right there that there's something but um, I'm sure it actually works. But do I wanna leave this system with this in it? Uh, probably not at this point, because this thing is, it's gotta be about 10, 10 years or more. So it looks like I was wrong. This actually came out in 2018. October 25th, 2018 was the review time. But uh, that being said, I would still probably stay away from it at this point. There seems to be quite a lot of problems with it on the internet. Now, this case is pretty wild. It has fans in some of the strangest places. Uh, these are hard drive bays right here. And as you can see, right below it is actually a fan that seems to be blowing air into the hard drive base. Then you have another fan here, and this is where the power supply goes. And yeah, giant, giant case. We have a Asus Blu-ray drive, which is actually kind of nice. Blu-ray drives are still kind of cool. Got a really nice feeling button, and then these are sealed off. And this whole thing up front here is metal. This is actually a really nice Corsair case. Looking at the backside, nicely cable managed by whoever owned it previously. Uh, we do have some of these Helix RGB fans. We're gonna take all this stuff out and look at it in better, better light. Before we do that, let's throw this thing on the test bench. I hate handling AIO cards. It's such a pain in the butt. I'm just gonna have to leave that like this for now. So guys, if he even just got the card for free, this would be a really good deal. Oh, that's not good. 
hearing a bit of noise from the card, which I was a little worried about. Let's see if maybe it'll go away. The problem with these cards is you can hear a lot of this pump noise. Um, I think it'll be fine once the bubbles go away. There we go. We did get a post, so that's good. So, seems to be running okay. There is a little bit of noise coming from this pump, but I feel like it's probably because it hasn't been turned on for a long time or something. Um, I do love this EVGA extender thing. It made plugging this in really easy. Uh, but I'm gonna leave this running for a little while and we're gonna test the motherboard separately on a different power supply. We're gonna be using this 1000G that I'm giving to him. So we'll put this on the side here. Now let's quickly just pop in these memory modules here. Now Gigabyte always has the dual clips. I don't know why some companies have dual, some companies have single. Nice sounding though. One. And we're just gonna throw a little air cool around here, nothing too crazy. Wow, I almost put that one in backwards. Um, so yeah, there we go. We're gonna be using this Quadro card to test it just because we don't need anything crazy and there's no onboard graphics on the Ryzen 3000 series. This Cooler Master should do. It's actually already a little bit of paste in the bottom, so I'm not gonna apply any paste. And right, we're just gonna hold it in place and see if it posts. Oh, that looks not good. Something's turning off right now. All right, something is a little weird. So I just pulled a stick out. I'm gonna leave this out. And when we go to power this on, um, for a second, the motherboard lights all showed up. And then the second that I put the CPU cooler on and put a little pressure on the CPU, it turned off. So let's, um, now we gotta troubleshoot because obviously something is up. But yeah, let's uh, let's pull the CPU out and see if the lights come on on the motherboard without the CPU in the socket. These CPUs are known to short. So we'll disconnect the power and simply just take the CPU out of the socket. And maybe if the lights come on on the motherboard, that's a bad sign for the CPU. Let's see here. All right, there's no lights on the motherboard. Hmm. I wonder if it's this PSU that I have. Maybe I should uh, try a different PSU. All right, so I changed the power supply over and a little weird thing, when you turn this on, the light now comes on, but I'm hearing some noise from the power supply. So I'm a little bit worried. Um, we're just gonna give it a go. There's really not much we can do. Let me put the cooler on real quick. So this light just came on and it's kind of flickering. I got a, I got a feeling that there's something wrong with this motherboard, but we'll give it a go. Yeah, the second I hit the power button, nothing. So yeah, unfortunately, it's looking like this board might be bad. Actually, I was just digging around and I found a Ryzen 3600. So we're gonna try to throw that in there and see if it does anything. All right, power supply on and no red light at all. So I got a feeling it's the board. Um, yeah, not really sure what to do now. I might have to hit up the customer and let them know that this, uh, this board's bad. So we swapped out the RAM for a ballistics stick of RAM, and I know that that one works. The 3600, which also didn't work, and the RM1000, which we swapped from the EVGA. This is pretty much the board, almost guaranteed at this point. The CPU could be fried too, but most likely it's probably fine. I don't see anything that looks to be really problematic with it. Um, a lot of these CPUs will short 3000 series 2 had a lot of deaths. There was so many issues with the 3000 series CPUs. All right guys, so unfortunately things didn't go as planned, but there's nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of things that we can do. Um, also, we got a 2080 for free. So, and it's a 2080 Super. I didn't even notice that looking closely at the back now, I can see the Super logo. So we're gonna be moving that into his current rig at home. He thought he was gonna be running two different rigs. So in a minute, we're gonna jump to that. It's probably gonna be an entire day in real time but uh, the YouTube magic, magic of editing. So we'll jump to that in a minute, but just wanted to discuss uh, pretty much, yeah, the board. The reason I can tell that this board is bad is Gigabyte notoriously does this thing where it flickers. And I've seen this so many times, especially with these X570 boards, they just like flicker for some reason. Like there's a short somewhere in the board. Um, I'm sure if I stripped it all down, I could probably find it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely the board, so. At least we can get a free video card out of it and maybe some RAM and some other things. Um, I cannot test that current RAM right now. I don't have any DDR4 boards currently here, but um, we will in the future. Now, if this was fix or flop, I could be, you know, replacing all of this stuff like Greg Salazar does. 
but uh, unfortunately I'm not at that point on YouTube quite yet, uh, making that kind of money, but I will give this to him. I think this will probably work just fine. Um, someone can test it. He could like eBay it or something like that. And if it works, they won't send it back. Uh, the RAM is probably most definitely good. It's just this board. So unfortunately, really pretty board, but a dead one at that. <laughs> so this is uh, pretty crazy, but my test bench is now getting a VGA light and this power supply is failing. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I have to look into it, but I moved this card over thinking maybe the card caused some sort of a short. Sometimes there's like shorts on the, uh, the actual VGA that goes into the PCIe slot, but uh, it seems to be working. So I do not know what is happening today. So we're gonna be running some Furmark here on this 2080 just so that we know it's okay when we put it in his system. We're sitting around 46 right now and we're halfway through the benchmark, so. All right, we got a 10,173, which is really decent. All right, so I got the test bench back up and running. I think something happened with the power supply. Sometimes if you flick off power supplies really fast, they can short and have a little issue and then come back after the capacitors have like stopped keeping a charge. I've had it happen a couple of times because um, right when I put this board back on one of these ones, there was no problem, so. The next day. We just went and picked up his PC. We got it right here. So we're gonna be swapping out the GPU in a minute, but before that, even a coffee person. I'm craving coffee for some reason. Caramel, mocha. Let's try this one. Crappy protein bars. So upon closer inspection, I noticed a lot of dust in this PC, but like an abnormal amount. And I think it's because the fans are actually reversed. If you look there, you can see that the fans face in the wrong direction. Also, this is a 1070 Ti. I think he said it was just a regular 1070. So that's a perk for him, I guess, if he goes to sell it. Uh, we're going to rip out these old fans, and I plan to put a couple of fans up front. Uh, these fans you see on the table right now are not going to work. I'll get into that in a little bit, but um, we got to have some airflow going to this new card as it is a little bit more power hungry. All right, everybody, I'm tearing this down a little to add the new fans in and the card, and I'm noticing that there's like no screws in this motherboard. Missing, missing missing i think there's maybe one up top there i noticed in some spots it looks like the standoffs are actually missing so i'm gonna at least make sure i get these corners that's a little bit better so i'm actually going to put these fans on the inside of this and not on the opposite side because it blocks the airflow being so close to the front panel now's a good time to install the card yeah, I think this fan's gonna come off. So this might look a little bit wild. Hopefully it runs okay. I am gonna add one more of the matching fan from up front over here, but I didn't end up running this to the front just because I think the airflow, I don't know, it's not too great over here. I know that there's not great airflow in this case at all. Like I gotta work with what I gotta work with here. Um, this is kind of funny cause I had to kind of stretch it up top. I'm gonna make sure it's not sitting right against this heatsink but uh, it should be okay. So let's pop the last fan on and turn it on. All right, guys, so this is one of those videos that literally cannot go right if I try. Um, everything's back in there, it's looking good. And I went to plug this in for the fans that we just installed so I can install this hub. And it uses a Molex and I figured, nah, EVGA, like most of these power supplies have Molexes. Nothing, there's no Molex in there, and I cannot assume that he has the cables for this as he is like a hunter of Facebook Marketplace, so most likely I would assume he probably got this off Facebook too. Probably no cables, so now I gotta rip those fans out. And before somebody says, no, every EVGA cable works, uh, no. This is like the unicorn model that has this weird, as you can see there, that particular cable does not work with any of those other ones that I had gotten on those recent deals. Those are all Corsair, but there's an EVGA in there. Got a little excited for this, but it's uh, <laughs> the other way around. 20 minutes later. All right, guys, it took a bit of work to get just this GPU in here. Um, it's also extremely hot in Massachusetts right now. It's like 96, it's 97 degrees or something, but humid. Uh, the switch is on. Let's see if it turns on. 
looking pretty promising. Hopefully I can close the wind, the glass here with these cables sticking out, but looks like success. All right, success. Now we just gotta do DDU. Actually, normally guys, I would say do DDU first, then install the new card, but I got ahead of myself. And uh, yeah, just don't listen to, don't listen to me right now, okay? The installer is done for the graphics driver, so we're pretty much all set here. Um, <clears throat> I did install the NVIDIA app. I know some people don't like it, but I think uh, it's not gonna be a big deal for him. I'll make sure I put this over on the side. Everything seems to be good. But yeah, guys, that's gonna be pretty much it. I'm gonna go deliver this right now. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any thoughts, comments, let me know, leave one down below. And uh, till next time, peace.